War takes many forms, and it's only fitting that our Cardboardian abstractions do the same. Physical violence waged on the battlefield, economic forces tugging on the tethers that separate class and community, and political, fighting for ideals in town squares and city halls. Focusing on the latter, though ultimately touching on all three, Votes for Women is a historical war-like game depicting opposite sides of the U.S. suffrage movement from 1848 to 1920. Throughout six eras that define the game's rounds, both sides march chronologically through the struggle as they draw deeper into their semi-randomized deck of unique cards depicting events ranging from the well-known to intensely researched obscurity, these cards are the fulcrum through which most of the gameplay is leveraged. The suffragists, comprised of two different interceding groups, try to build political power and press towards ratification of the 19th Amendment, using their greater flexibility and grassroots momentum to their advantage. The opposition uses its greater resources and stronger roots to fortify states and counter lobby, postponing Congress from passing the amendment, which can ultimately lead to an automatic win. Yes, the opposition has the upper hand, and while gameplay-wise, these two asymmetric factions may be balanced, the game definitely portrays a grueling uphill struggle for the suffragists, battling against a ruthless oppressor comprised of slavers, supremacists, sexists, and schemers. Even if the suffragists lobby the six necessary tokens to prompt ratification, the game carries on with players populating, removing, and deflecting political influence cubes until one side has four cubes locking the state in to ratification or rejection, one of a whopping 36 states that must ratify for suffragists to win, whereas only 19 states need to reject for the opposition victory. In practice, the gameplay is simple. Start a round by drawing six cards, bid to gain control of a unique strategy card, then players take turns playing a card for its described effect or discarding it for a standard action to add more cubes to a region, attempt to lobby Congress, or to gain buttons, a valuable currency for a variety of effects, not least of which is spending to reroll dice. Much of the game is about spreading your opponents thin and capitalizing on strategic openings to play powerful cards for their effects, adding campaigners, of which the suffragists can ultimately recruit twice as many as the opposition, increases your geographic reach and boosts the number of dice rolled for standard actions, giving a nice power curve to the game. After six eras and the likelihood that Congress has passed the bill but neither side has fully locked in enough states, the game enters a tense crescendo as each state's vote is determined by a dice roll modified by their side's influence in the state and the reroll tokens they spend, going state by state until 36 for or 19 against is met. It may sound anticlimactic to have the game end determined by a series of D6 roll-offs, but I'm not joking when I say this is one of the most exhilarating conclusions to any game I've played. It is a bit jarring at first, but with context, subsequent games are all about jockeying for position for this final event, not unlike presidential elections, where no matter how much you've locked in, how much you've prepared, the anticipation of going into the final vote is both terrifying and exhilarating. Exhilarating. Like Fort Circle's Shores of Tripoli before it, Votes for Women carries a surprising amount of thematic resonance in its minimalism. History, as well as a healthy dose of modern parallelism, is inescapable, magnificently bleeding through each illustration, each button, each cubic abstraction, cultivating an authenticity only reinforced by a welcome series of well-researched supplemental materials. It is not a complex game, nor is it one with many levers to pull for new experiences each time it hits the table, but it is one that rewards replay with depth and thematic color of substance and grit. And as a war game, perhaps in a different sense of the word, it's got chops, agile, grueling, and strategic. Votes for Women honors an entire lineage of historical battlers before it, while standing brilliantly and timely on its own.